Peace. Welcome to Faith Expressions. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us reflect and talk about St. Thomas the Apostle. St. Thomas the Apostle, July 3rd, is his feast day. If we think about people, about friends, many times we can think of them and we remember them of the funny moments or the something odd, something funny, maybe something sometimes uh, negative about the person. Uh, similar is happening with St. Thomas. We remember St. Thomas by saying, oh, the doubting Thomas. In fact, in the scripture, in the gospel, Thomas the Didymus, he is being remembered of this something funny or something sarcastic. But now, taken in a positive way because he becomes now an example to all of us who has maybe the attitude and tendency of skepticism and who has trouble in trying to grow up and develop in the faith. But in as much as he is famous of, of this doubter of this being of this being a doubting Thomas or a being skeptic he should and we should try to see him as an example of deep faith he said to Jesus my Lord and my God this is also equally important about who Saint Thomas the Apostle is and this is what we can learn uh, as a lesson from his life. Let us go to the particulars. So, so th St. Thomas, is the apostle, is yes, one of the twelve apostles. So he was present in all the miracles, he was present in all the teachings, wherever Jesus would, would go, and he was present when Jesus said, who do you say that I am? And St. Peter, speaker of the twelve, said, uh, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. So, knowing this, that St. Thomas was, was with Jesus all along, is also for us an important reminder to know who St. Thomas is. That like other apostles and other disciples, like all of us, he grew up, he developed in his relationship with Jesus gradually. He had his own doubts, that's why he's the doctor. But then that doubt disappeared after the resurrection, he met the risen Lord. We will go back to that. And so the idea here is like all of us, like us, we grow gradually in our friendship with the Lord. We grow gradually in our um, faith and love of the Lord. But then knowing that the Holy Spirit in our time and context is at work knowing that the grace of Jesus Christ is at work this gradual growth in the faith and in the love of God if we cooperate it will not be delay delaying growth and it will be a climactic journey it will be going up and let us try to have that kind of growth there this is how Saint uh, Stamas also grew up and developed in the faith, in his discipleship of the Lord. So, St. Thomas in the scriptures is remembered, one, during the time when Jesus was going to heal or reanimate or give back life to Lazarus. During that time, there was already the animosity between the elders and leaders of the people against Jesus and so there was already the plot of killing the Lord so the Jesus said let us go back to Bethany to waken up our friend Lazarus so they were hesitant but St. Thomas said let us go and die with him 
Of course, it didn't happen during this time. And also, it didn't happen also that they are going to die with Jesus during the Passion narrative or during the time of the Passion and the death of the Lord. But it happened after many years when on his part, he was already proclaiming the faith and his travels lead him to India. And in proclaiming about the message of salvation, he died for the Lord. He died for the faith. That fulfilled this statement in the scriptures, let us go and die for him. The other um, passage in the scriptures about St. Thomas is that part of the gospel passage wherein the other apostles and disciples saw already the risen Lord, but St. Thomas was not with them. And so they told Thomas that, that they have seen the, the risen Lord. And Thomas said, unless I have put my hands and finger into the nail marks and, and into his side, I will not believe. The very famous phrase about doubting. The time came when he was already with the other apostles. Jesus, the risen Lord, came. And right away, Jesus addressed, Peace be with you. And right away told Thomas, Come here. And so, when Saint Thomas, now in contact with the risen Lord, he said, My Lord and my God, now, I would like us to capture this moment and I would like us to capture this very statement of faith from St. Thomas, my Lord and my God. Because this is not just a simple exclamation, oh, I am now beholding the risen Lord. Re re yes, Lord, this is really you. It is not just like that. Yes. In as much as he already believes all the other truths about Jesus Christ, as he was following Jesus Christ before the event of the resurrection, this belief on the risen Lord, my Lord and my God, is for him the key to understand and to be a confirmation of all other truths. Saint Paul, years after, would say, if Jesus has not been raised, in vain is our faith. Before St. Paul could say that in his life experience and in his writings, St. Thomas already has this profession of faith. That the risen Lord, this Christ who is my Lord and my God, is the key to understand and the co crowning truth of all other truths. For him, therefore, it would be like this. He already knew Jesus is the Son of God. So St. Peter said that, all others. So they believed. He believed. But then, not until now, he would say, My Lord and my God, Son of God. So now it would click in his mind and in his heart because of the grace of God in him now would say, It makes sense that he will rise again because he's Son of God. Now, maybe for us now we say, well, this is, this is just a small matter. No, this is a big deal, especially in their time. Now, St. Thomas was, was there in all the miracles that happened. He knew Jesus is a man of power. Yeah. But then, not until this profession of faith, my Lord and my God, it would click in his mind and in his heart say, it makes sense. That he has power over life, he has power over the demons, he has power over sicknesses, he has power over nature, he stopped the, the storm at sea. It makes sense because he is Lord and God. You see, this is an example that we can take from St. Thomas the Apostle. The lesson that he himself lived and has discovered and has afterwards proclaimed Jesus is Lord and God, my Lord and my God. And that is why we take now this lesson to our life. If we take the resurrection 
as key to understand also all other truths in our Christian faith and also in our Christian living. Always be focusing on Jesus, the risen Lord. It will be like this. It will make sense to believe in the real presence of Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist. We would say it makes sense because Jesus is alive. You see, because Jesus is alive. So he is present because he is alive. There wouldn't be a real presence in the Holy Eucharist if Jesus is dead. Because after all, there will, there will be no sense having the, the Holy Eucharist. Also, it will make sense. Jesus said, I will be with you until the end of the age. It would make sense to truly believe in the words of the Lord Jesus Christ because he is alive. It would also make sense in our time and context to believe in the church, the church of Jesus Christ, the bearer of the word of God, the, the bearer of the presence of the Lord in our midst, the bearer of the authority of Christ in our midst. This is the church. It will make sense that we have to believe and respect and honor the mother church because Jesus is alive. He reigns and rules and is present. And he is the head of the mystical body, the church, because he is alive. You see, everything will make sense. Capturing this statement of faith coming from St. Thomas. And so also this statement in the from early from the early years of Christianity from during the celebration of the Eucharist of the Mass and on the consecration and once the priest would elevate the host the body of Christ would elevate the blood of the Lord the chalice we repeat the statement from St. Thomas, my Lord and my God. Every time there is now the elevation of the body of Christ, my Lord and my God. We adore. This is from Him. And of course, many times this kind of devotion is forgotten, but speaking and reflecting about the life of St. Thomas the Apostle, let us recapture this um, devotion of Adoring the Lord Jesus in the Holy Eucharist during time of consecration, during the elevation, we say, my Lord, my God. This is from St. Thomas. And so from St. Thomas, we have this example and we have this lesson. Also in our time, let us be captivated. Let us be empowered by our faith in the risen Lord. And with the example of St. Thomas, let us also be enthusiastic to share our faith to others. God bless. St. Thomas, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe if you have not done so. And share this video to others. Stay tuned for the other videos for adult faith formation. Stay tuned for these videos. God bless.